Hello, welcome to the first lab of Biology 308. Everyone should have already done the blood typing pre-lab questions. There are five questions. So what we did is some of them are fill in the blank, but we changed them all into multiple choice and we loaded them in Blackboard. So for those of you who've already filled this out and sent it to me, awesome. I've given you your grades and I've entered it in Blackboard for you. But from now on, you can just go in and do the pre-lab questions as multiple choice. So that'll make life a little bit easier on both of us. The objectives are to learn about blood typing. You need to know what antigens are. You need to know what antibodies are. And you need to be able to determine blood type. So a long time ago, we actually had students prick their fingers and put the blood and put the antibodies, and then they can determine their own blood type. But when we realize that there's AIDS out there, there's hepatitis, and there's other blood-borne pathogens, we stopped doing that and we started doing simulated blood. So, but now, in the time of COVID, we're doing it online. So hopefully, you guys will get a feel for this, even though we're not meeting in person and you're not pricking your finger. But it's important to know what your blood type is. So whenever you go in the hospital, one of the first things they do, they start an IV and they type your blood just in case they need to find out uh, if you need a transfusion. So that's what we're going to be talking about. On the surface of all the cells in your body are little proteins that stick up. And there are some glycoproteins and there are some uh, glycolipids that stick up. And these identify you as you. So if I tried to put my kidney in your body, it wouldn't work because your body would recognize all proteins on the surface of my kidney as being not compatible with yours. If they tried to give you my blood, unless you happen to be O positive, then it probably wouldn't work. So they, uh, it's important to understand what things are on the outside of the cell. These glycolipids and glycoproteins that are sticking up on the surface um, someone cleverly found one of them and said, oh, we're going to name that one A. And then they found on someone else's cells, they didn't have the A glycoprotein or glycolipid. They had one they called B. And some people had both A and both B. And then some people didn't have A or B. And they said, okay, they're O. They don't have either one. They are missing the antigen. Now, when we do the immune system, we're going to learn that an antigen is anything that gets in your body and causes your body to attack it. It could be a worm. It could be a splinter. It could be a virus. Or it could be someone else's blood or someone else's cells. So if you have type A blood, you can... Uh, have a type A transfusion, but you can't have B. You might be able to have O type because it doesn't have any antigens on the surface of it. But we thought we had it figured out a while ago and we started doing transfusions and most of the time it worked fine. If you gave somebody with A blood, you gave them somebody else's type A blood, and it worked. But every now and then, somebody would die. And they said, okay, there's got to be something besides the A and the B that's on there that's causing the cells to clump up. There's some other antigen out there. So at the same time, there was a man that was looking at the rhesus monkey, and he was comparing the proteins of the rhesus monkey to the proteins in our body. And come to find out we're about 98% the same proteins. But he found this rhesus monkey protein on the outside of the red blood cells. It's also on the other cells, but we just look at the red blood cells for when we're doing blood typing. And he said, aha, this must be 
the culprit. This is this is what's happening because a lot of people have the RH um, or Reese's monkey uh, protein, but some people don't. So the people who do have it, we call them RH positive, and the people who don't have it, we call them RH negative. So in order to tell somebody what your blood type is, you have to tell them about the A, the B, or the O, and you have to tell them whether you're rhesus monkey positive or negative. So in my case, I told you I'm A positive. So I do have the rhesus monkey protein on my cells. So if you gave my blood to someone who was negative, they would attack my blood as a foreign invader. So antibodies are the things that are in the blood that clump the blood. They detect the blood as a foreign invader. Now this is the thing that some students get really confused about. So let's stop and think about this. If you have type A blood, you have A antigens. You cannot have A antibodies, because if you did, you'd clump your own blood. But you do have B antibodies. So a person who has type A antigens will have type B antibodies. Now, think about that, see if you can work your way through it, because if you don't understand that one statement right there, then you're not going to understand anything else about the rest of this lab because that's what you have to know. So the antigen is what's present on the surface, and you cannot have antibodies against yourself. So if you go look at the person who has type B blood, if they have type B blood, they have B antigens. They do not have B antibodies, because then they clump their own blood. So they're going to have A antibodies. Now, a person who is type O blood, like I am, I don't have the A or the B antigen. I have neither one of those. But I do have antibodies against A and B. So if you gave me type A blood or type B blood or type AB blood, you would kill me because I have antibodies against it and I will attack the incoming blood I will clump it together in great big gooey clots that are unable to move through my blood vessels and unable to move through my heart. And I will not get any oxygen and I will die. So it's very important not to give me anything except type O blood. And I have O positive, which means I have the rhesus monkey factor, so I don't have antibodies against RH. So you could give me O positive blood, or you could give me O negative blood, and I'd be okay with either one. All right? A little bit confusing. So what antigens does a person with AB have? Well, they have both the A antigen and the B antigen, so they're type AB. They do not have A antibodies, nor do they have B antibodies. They don't have those. Okay? So you can give somebody who has type AB blood, type A blood, because they won't attack it. You can give them type B blood, because they won't attack that either. Now, I made a little PowerPoint, and I put some little jokes in there, but there's a video in the last slide, and it'll tell you exactly who can have whose blood. Take a moment and watch it. So it's kind of neat because you click on the little um, IV bag of blood and you watch and it shows you which people can have that particular type of blood. So as it starts to come down, you should be able to predict who can get which blood. Now I'll give you a, a, a spoiler. Type O negative is the universal donor. O negative is a universal donor. Anybody can have type O blood. 
So if you watch any TV shows, you see them get the person out of the ambulance, they rush them into the emergency room, and they're yelling, get some O-neg, get some O-neg. Well, that's because it doesn't matter what type of blood that person has, they can take O-negative blood. So it's a universal donor. And the universal recipient is AB positive. Because they don't have antibodies against A, they don't have antibodies against B, and they don't have antibodies against the rhesus monkey factor. So they don't have any antibodies against any of that, so they can take anybody's blood. So there's your spoiler. And you should know who the universal donor is, and you should know who the universal recipient is. Because they always like to ask that on test. All right. Now, there, um, there's some stuff in here talking about that uh, blood is connective tissue, and connective tissues are made of a matrix and cells. And in this case, the matrix is the plasma, and the plasma has albumin in it, has antibodies in it, uh, nutrients, waste, things like that. And then you have the formed elements, which are the red blood cells. And the proper name for red blood cells is erythrocytes, erythrocytes. And then you have the leukocytes, or the white blood cells, and you have platelets. So those are called formed elements. And if you put this in a centrifuge tube and spin it, the heavy stuff goes to the bottom and the plasma goes to the top. So that's one of the things you'll learn in lecture. So I've been talking about clumping and antibodies and antigens, but this is actually what you would see if you ran a test. So what you would do, you take a slide, and you put three drops of blood. So you prick your finger, and you squeeze out a drop, and you squeeze out another drop, and you squeeze out another drop. When you do that, then you stir it with a toothpick, and you make sure you use a clean toothpick for each one, and you add antibodies to A, antibodies to B, and antibodies to the rhesus monkey factor. Now, if you look, this did not clump. The blood just stayed spread out. So there are no A antigens. So this person does not have type A blood because when you put antibodies on it, it didn't clump. When you took the drop of blood and you put B antibodies, it did clump. So what happened is the antibodies grabbed hold of a red blood cell it, by the little B antigen sticking up, and it made all of those red blood cells stick together in a big gooey mess. So this is clearly clumped. And this could go through your capillaries and your blood vessels and your heart just fine, but this will not go through, this clumped stuff. So this particular person has type B blood. They do not have type A. And if you see this clumped also, so here's all the red blood cells clumped together, and you see it's all clear out here where they put the rhesus monkey antibodies. So we would say this person is B positive. So that's what that looks like. Now I found a few more online to show you. All right. Here is A is clumping, and the rhesus monkey factor is clumping, but B did not clump. So this person is A positive. That's what this is. So whatever clumps, that's the blood type, and then you have to look and see whether the uh, rhesus monkey factor clotted. Most people are positive. There are very few people who are rhesus monkey negative. But those people have a problem, especially if they're females, uh, because if they get pregnant by a man who is rhesus monkey positive, there's a possibility that she could attack her baby while it's inside of her and kill it. So uh, women need to know whether they're Rh positive, Rh negative. Here's another. In this case, the A clumped and the B clumped. So this person has type AB blood, but the RH factor didn't. So this is a person who is AB negative. 
So that's what AB negative looks like. Now, the lab that we do normally when we meet in person is kind of neat. We have some blood. It's synthetic blood. It's not real blood. And we have this scenario about Mike, and he's going to the hospital. The hospital, somehow or another, doesn't have a blood bank, which isn't a possibility. Uh, but if it was a possibility... Uh, then they would say, okay, Mike has four friends, and they have all offered to donate blood. So in the lab, we would take blood from Kim, Ajax, June, and Frank, and Mike, and we would see what the blood types are of each of those to see if any of those friends have a matching blood type. So we would take five plates and put three drops of Mike's blood, three drops of of Kim's, Ajax, June's, and Frank's, and then we would put A antibodies on the first drop, B antibodies on the second drop, and the rhesus monkey factor on the third, third one. And then you would mix it up, and you would write down the results in this little table, and you would be able to tell whose blood was compatible with Mike so that they could give a transfusion. But uh, unfortunately, you're going to have to do an online lab instead. So they want you to draw uh, which of these, and you should try this, which of these would you draw clumped blood? So here's A, here's B, there's the RH factor, and they want to know which would clump for A positive. Well, the A would clump and the RH factor would clump, because that's positive. But the B would not clump. All right, for B negative, I'm just giving you a few of them. For B negative, the B would clump, but the A would not clump, and because it's negative, the RH would not clump either. So this is the only one that would clump for a B negative. So on a quiz, if we give you a blood slide, you should be able to tell what the blood type is by looking at the clumping. So the lab isn't very long. That was pretty much it. Make sure that you look at that uh, video that I made for you in the uh, blood humor. Let's see if I can pull up some of that. This is the slide that you'll find at the end of the little PowerPoint I made. And enjoy the cartoons. See if you understand what's going on in the cartoons. So if you can find out why science jokes are funny, it means you understand the concepts behind it. But when you get to this last slide, click on this bag right here, and it will show you all the different people and which ones can get type B plus. So I highly recommend you do that.